Erev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I want to take you back again uh, to the story that we were covering earlier this morning about the the attacks that uh, the Turkey is doing. Uh, the, the Turkish military, 13 warplanes, F-16 fighter jets, uh, bombers have crossed into northern Iraq, hitting PKK targets in that area. Of course, PKK is a Kurdish party. Uh, that is trying to help establish its own Kurdistan, uh, its own state within the province of Iraq. And uh, it's been a big contention with Turkey. They consider them a terrorist group, uh, and they have been targeting not only uh, the military aspects of the Kurdish people, but also the civilian populations within their own country on the southeast corner there. Uh, and, of course, we have actually called this a genocide campaign that President Erdogan is conducting against his own civilian population. Uh, he claims that he's only do attacking the, uh, the military wings that are hiding amongst the civilians. We have seen footage from RT News that have clearly showed that buildings are just totally decimated. People have been burned alive inside the buildings from reports there on the ground. And then today I got to see this particular man right here, Maharim Erbi, who is a human rights lawyer in Turkey, uh, making a stand for the Kurds. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, Maharim is also a Kurd as well. He has been in prison for his uh, views and stand. Uh, he's of a different party, but he is still considered, a, is considered by the Turkish government a branch of the PKK. Uh, but he stated today on RT News in one of their special broadcasts, I caught, which I caught the tail end of, that it has become a genocide. So he's, I'm not the only one saying it's a genocide. He's seen it firsthand. He said that the people there, even women, are after they've been murdered, are stripped naked and left in the street and will not bury them. He said it's a major custom of the Kurds not to leave a person unburied. And they're doing these things intentionally to violate the Kurdish people. But he said it's men, women, and children all are being massacred uh, he said, a complete genocide by the Turkish government. And yet, at the, at, with this being done, what's amazing is no one is coming to the Kurdish people's uh, side to even do anything about it. I mean, <clears throat> there was this one article here on Sputnik News uh, that speaks about uh, the, the, the country wants Kurds to have their own state, and it is not shy about it. Uh, but it's uh, the one country here that stands with the Kurdish people is Israel. In a region where the Kurds have few allies, one country stands out. High-ranking Israeli politicians, including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, have voiced their support for an independent Kurdish state, an idea that countries where the Kurds live, Turkey, Iraq, and Syria, and Iran, strongly oppose. That's funny. Even Iran... Uh, is opposing a Kurdish uh, state. No one seems to care about these people whatsoever. And in, in wake of some of the latest violence that's going on, even Israel is not coming to their defense. Uh, it's just really sad. And I'm afraid that Israel's not coming to their defense because right now uh, Israel is trying to keep the relationship with the United States uh, pretty much at peace. And then the United States is where they once were allies to the Kurds, now totally have ditched the Kurds and thrown them under the bus and could care less while the uh, Turks are totally mutilating them, uh, going in there with their fighter jets. At one time, Russia seemed to show some interest in trying to help them, but at this point here, even Russia is not getting involved because Russia, if they get involved, it could turn into a nuclear conflict, and Russia is trying to avoid a direct confrontation with NATO. That seems to be very obvious in this whole scenario here. But it reminds me of the prophecy by the prophet Nahum, as we mentioned earlier. But there was one thing that I, I failed to catch when I first made the video, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to come back to this subject here. In chapter 7, and maybe chapter 6 in King James Bible, for those of you that are following along, but in the Tanakh here, it's, it says, And it shall come to pass that all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? Whence shall I seek comforters for thee? Do you realize the prophecy right here in front of your face? Who will bemoan her? See, 
Who will bemoan her? Nobody seems to care about the Kurdish people, except just a few handful of journalists around the world. I mean, RT News is definitely bringing it up and keeping it in the spotlight. Otherwise, we wouldn't even know anything about it. And, and even when we do the news broadcast here, people put in comments that just flat out hate these people. Um, you know, and you have to understand, I realize in wartime, war crimes are committed on all sides. I don't care who it is. The United States does war crimes too. So does the Turks. The Kurds, no doubt, have done it as well. I'm not just saying that everybody is so perfectly innocent. Russia included. Nobody is, is, is uh, above making mistakes or they have uh, soldiers that are fighting that go beyond what they should. I'm not justifying that. But these people here have been fighting ISIS, gaining uh, ground, and yet totally neglected by all sides in this battle completely. I mean, Russia, I think, was giving them some air support when they were really getting engaged in this uh, with, with Bashar al-Assad, but even Assad's regime is against them. You know, so where do these people, where, how could they ever possibly get a state? And even in Geneva, we were there in Geneva. We were there in the hotel with uh, some of the so-called moderate rebel opposition there, uh, meeting in the restaurant there in the hotel that we were staying at there, an American delegation with them. I mean, every, everybody, I mean, if the American delegation is with the, with the rebels, they certainly are not with the Kurds. And this is why the Kurds have not been invited to uh, the peace talks thus far. Their, their representative has been there, but they've not been invited into these peace talks. Nobody cares about them, and the prophecy says so. Who will bemoan her? I mean, this is sad, friends, very sad. And, you know, it is a fact, though. It is a fact. Uh, let me take you back here in the article that, uh, uh, that they did today on Israel, uh, excuse me, on RT News. Uh, it says right here, in December of 2015, Anchor deployed about 150 soldiers and, and 25 tanks to Iraq's Nineveh province without per asking permission from Baghdad. Anchor argued that its soldiers were sent to northern Iraq to counter a threat from the Islamic State uh, to Turkish military instructors training anti-terrorist forces in the area. By the way, friends, this this Nineveh, a part of Nineveh, is under the Kurdish control. And, and they were not there to knock out ISIS. They were there to stop the Kurds from getting, getting complete control over Nineveh. Why? Because we find out that there is still a major supply of oil coming through Nineveh into Turkey by ISIS. I mean, this is just totally nuts. And then we find out that the Kurds actually capture... Uh, let's see if this is not the article here. Right here, according to Iraqi news, the Kurds actually captured an American ISIS member from Virginia. That's this man right here. This is on uh, Iraqi news, American ISIS fighter captured by Kurdish forces in Senyar. He was trying. His name, uh, let's see, what was this guy's name here? Um... Oh, goodness. I don't, I don't recall right where it was at now. But, but anyway, when they captured him, uh, he, they said he believed he appeared to be a citizen of the United States, adding that the detainee was identified as a 27-year-old Muhammad Jamal Amin from the U.S. state of Virginia. And, uh, and well, again, Americans involved in the battle there. Now, now, that doesn't mean that it's American forces there, but we do know that the United States trained them. Uh, but he was trying to get back to Turkey, knowing that Turkey's a safe place for ISIS so that he could get back home to the United States. I mean, this is, this is nuts, friends. Absolutely nuts. Now, uh, this article here, first step of annexation, the real reason Turkey sent troops to Iraq. Turkey's president, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, is trying to take advantage of the power vacuum in northern Iraq to create a proto-state uh, loyal to Ankara. If not annex this territory, defense analyst uh, Stalinslav uh, Ivanov wrote for the New Eastern Orthodox. Uh, look there, let me get this down where I can see it a little bit better there. In December, uh, Ankara sent approximately 130 Turkish troops to a town close to Mosul, the second largest city in Iraq, which was captured by Daesh in June, tw uh, June 2014. The initiative was not authorized by Baghdad, which called a viol uh, violation of sovereignty. Iraqi authorities urged Ankara to withdraw soldiers and military hardware from the province of Nineveh and refrain from similar actions in the future. President Erdogan 
and his entourage believed that Nineveh province was illegally annexed from Turkey in 1920, taking advantage of the uh, attenuation of the central Iraqi authority of de facto division of the country into three parts, Shiite south, Sunni center, and a Kurdish north. Mr. Erdogan cherishes the idea of restoring historical justice, the analyst explained. Now notice, the Kurds would be getting the north. That's why Turkey doesn't want them in there. He doesn't, he doesn't want any competition whatsoever up, upsetting his whole uh, idea there of getting Nineveh back. And the prophecy clearly states who will bemoan her. That is those that are there in Nineveh that are being killed, slaughtered, and murdered, and driven out of the city there. Nineveh is laid waste. And nobody seems to care about what the Turks are doing. They don't care. The prophecy said they would not care. They could care less about the Kurds, and we're seeing that come to pass. One other thing here I just want to share with you quickly in the news here. The, the uh, uh, Islamic Jihad hacked into IDF drones. Uh, the charges were filed in Gaza residents who hacked into IDF drones, letting Islamic Jihad view IDF's activities over Gaza. That's not a very good thing at all. Very terrible indeed. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. We do need your help in making these broadcasts uh, possible. So definitely please be a part of this. Support uh, the work we're doing here at Israeli News Live. We try to bring you these prophetic uh, insights uh, to be a blessing to you. You can go to our website, israelinewslive.org, and there's a donation place there, or israelreturns.com. Be at the end of this broadcast. You can look at it there. Uh, there's also a contact section where if you prefer to, to mail uh, a donation instead, then we have that on israelreturns.com. Shalom and good evening.